Hi, my name is Nick Isabella and I'm the Dryland SD Product Specialist here at IGUS. Engineers come to us all the time looking to utilize a lead screw to actuate their application. Today we're going to be covering all the frequently asked questions that engineers have when they look to utilize a lead screw. Anytime I work with an engineer on a new application, I look to get them thinking about four main data points. These data points can help determine the majority of the questions that need to be asked to properly utilize a lead screw in their application. Those engineers should be thinking about load, speed, duty cycle, and the stroke of the application. First, we want to discuss the payload of the application. This can take into account for radial loads that the linear guides will see. But what needs to be determined is a quantified axial load. This is going to help determine how much force is required to drive the application. Once you've quantified an axial payload, you want to start taking into account for the speed of the application. I usually ask a certain set of questions to an engineer to help determine what the goal is for the application. It could be as simple as, how many seconds do you want to complete this stroke in? How quickly does it need to get from point A to point B? Those are the things that you need to think about when you're trying to determine the speed that's required to reach this goal. The RPM is important, but it is typically determined after you have figured out what the linear feed rate of the application is. That can be determined simply by the linear distance traveled per minute. Once you have that figure, whether it's 6 meters a minute or 12 meters a minute, you can determine the RPM of the application by taking a look at your desired lead screw and what the distance traveled per revolution of that lead screw is, and that is how you can actually determine the RPM. When working with a polymer lead screw nut, one of the more important factors that's going to determine the lifetime of the part is the duty cycle of the application. How often is it going to be running per minute, per hour, per day? This is extremely important for a polymer part because as the application is running, if it has a higher load and a higher speed, at that point the wear rate is going to be higher for the part. So to properly spec a lead screw size, you also need to take into account for that duty cycle to make sure that the PV values are in check. Load, speed, duty cycle, and stroke are four extremely important data points, but that's not all that should be considered. You should be asking yourself whether or not you need a lead screw that's going to be self-locking, or if you want a part that is able to back drive. You should be thinking about the types of linear guides that you're using for an application. Are you going to be using a sliding guide, or are you going to be using a rolling guide, like a reciprocating ball bearing? Those types of questions are going to help determine whether or not you can use a smaller or a larger lead screw in your application. You also want to take into account for how you're going to drive this application. Are you going to be using a DC motor or a stepper motor? Are you going to be hand cranking this application? These are some of the secondary factors that you want to consider when you're trying to narrow down what lead screw you use in your application. If you'd like advice on how to determine the best lead screw for your application, send a message to the email below. If not, you can check out the IGUS website and our lifetime calculators. Thank you for watching and have a good day.